uh, thank you guys so much for being willing to come in and chat about this stuff with me um, and and being able to uh, being willing to help promote the charity. Um, mm. I, I can't thank you enough. And thanks for dealing with like us starting a little bit late. It's always uh, a little bit chaotic uh, in the middle of a live stream. Um, so uh, do you want to just jump right in? I, I, could you each introduce yourselves briefly to mm -hmm. talk about what like what you want to talk about most about yourselves um what you want to be fancy about or what you want to show off about your accomplishments this is f you know full license to be as braggy as you can be uh all right so i guess i'll get started i'm uh nandi taylor my debut novel dropped this january it's called given it's a young adult fantasy romance um, and we're talking about uh, reading critique today. So, I mean, I've had, oh, I've had 15 years of, of reading and critiquing to get to the point where I could finally write a novel that could get published. Um, I'm also, I recently uh, took up a, a post as a reader for a fantasy and science fiction magazine. Yeah. Oh, so you, you, you're in, you're in, you're in the trenches. Mm -hmm. Um, that's great. Um, and, you know, I, I practiced your name and I really wanted to be able to say it with confidence. Is it okay if I try it and I goof it up or can I, can I just have you introduce yourself? Okay, me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, sure. Let me go. I'll dive in. So, uh, yeah, my name is, um, am I clear? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. My name is Zogene Chowe Donald Ekpeki. Um, I'm a slush reader, um, editor, and speculative fiction writer. Um, I've read for several magazines, um, from Podcastle to Strange Horizons, Cosmic Root and Eldritch Shows, and currently the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. I won the Nomo Award for Best Speculative Fiction Story by an African, and I co-edited the Dominion Anthology and um, several issues of the Victor's Quarterly and the Selling Quarterly. So, yeah, that's me. So, wow. everybody, I got to say, the reason I was so excited to do this with these folks is, like, I have, like, uh, uh, hi, my name's Pat Rothfuss. Um, I, um, uh, my experience is a little different. I used to be, I was a writing tutor uh, in college, um, where our university had an interesting program where you could get a one credit pass fail English credit. Um, and it's, it's huge pedagogical push was, uh, the, the writing 57 program was students opportunity to fail because if you can't fail, it's really hard to do a good job learning. And there's very little space for that in the educational system, like how often are you given the chance to like, just take a run at something and not be good at it. And that's okay. So the, the gist was there, you showed up and you're like, I want to try some writing and you pick what kind you pick what you want to do. And as long as you showed up and did it, you got your credit. Mm -hmm. And I came in and at first I took the class and then I liked it. And I trained up, I took uh, the 300 level education course that let me be a writing tutor. And then I worked there because I was an undergrad for like nine years. I worked as a tutor there for like seven. And then I went on into grad school. I was a writing tutor there. Um, and then I was like an assistant lecturer. I was never really a professor at college, but then I was also a writing tutor there. I've been part of writing groups but mm. I've never been, I don't have the experience these guys do of being on the other side of publishing, like official editor. Mm. I have edited my stuff, but like I've never actually done the slush. I've never actually done any of that. So like my experience is really lacking there. So uh, I'll also say my other credential personally is like, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say I might revise my own work more than any other living writer, um, which I, I, I would not say, but Jeff Vandermeer did a, a poll several years ago for his writing book. 
And he's like, hey, everyone, I'm just gathering some data. How many times did you revise your manuscript? And I'm like, well, it depends on how you count it. But like, you know, total times I've gone through my thing, like I had at least 100 beta readers Mm -hmm. And I met and I talked with each of them and they made comments on their manuscripts. And I, I did them in stages throughout the years. And also I did my own. I would read my own and mark them up. Like, and so I'm like somewhere between 150 and 500 revisions. What? Yeah. Right. What? Yeah. So like. <laughs> 500 and, revisions. It's. <laughs> and again, I'm not saying. Everyone, do not follow my path. This is not, I'm not, this This is an illness, what is what I have. Um, but I do also have a lot of experience going from the person who's like, I wrote a book. Do you want to read it? And people are like, yeah. And then I'm like, now tell me how you feel. That's not a good way to slowly developing a technique uh, through my training as a tutor and a writing tutor to really get good like sort of what I think of as uncorrupted feedback from people uh, who are not trained to give writing feedback. Like that, that I think is, is something I know a lot about. So, okay. um, so there we are folks. Um, I will be opening up this, uh, this up to question, um, uh, up to questions later, but for now I kind of want to say um, like what, what are some things that you know now that you really wish, like, oh, this would have saved me so so much time and energy back in the day. Like, uh, what are some of the, that low-hanging fruit, if only somebody would have clued you in, would have saved you so much time? Mm. I think, uh, uh, go, yep, yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay, no, no, you go, you go ahead. Bro. Oh, I was going to say, um, make sure... You're giving your book to people who are your audience. <laughs> um, like uh, sometimes you get feedback and people will just rip your book apart <laughs> and you don't know at the time that it's just because this book wasn't meant for that person, you know, and that can really, um, that can be a blow to you, especially as a new writer. Yeah. Um, to get that kind of feedback. And, and it can leave you feel. I think there's probably a good amount of writers out there that, that maybe quit because they just gave their book to the wrong person. 100% agree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I talk? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, yeah. Well, I would like to say that um, you should learn to write before you actually write. Okay. Uh, you know, this might seem a bit controversial, but I usually encourage people to start with short fiction. You know, there's the big controversy where people tend to be more liberal. They say you can actually do anything you want. Um, the art forms are different, but I really encourage people to start with short fiction, whatever um, form of writing you eventually decide to do, whether novel, novellas or short stories. Because starting with short fiction, it gives you a chance to um, it gives you a chance to see how well you can do to iron out the flaws in your writing, mm. you know, in small doses before you graduate to, you know, you know, eventually you might have a three hundred thousand word book without <laughs> um, something as simple as um, correct punctuations or um quotation marks or paragraph imagine a three hundred thousand word book without paragraphs <laughs> you know? right right yeah i think i had a nightmare simple. about that once yeah there are some very simple things writer don't know that they need to do because reading and writing are very different things you know you might have read all your life you might be a career reader but there are some small things you miss until you actually sit in front of the pc so it's always advisable to find yourself you know to understand where you are before you dive into the you know the ocean as they say mm. I, I think that's 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 great advice and i do think for me i, I also kind of regret you know it, it took me so long to get good at some things because like understand i'm good at story but i'm bad at plot 
and I think I would have I would have had more practice if I would have taken that advice, which I got early on, and done like learn how to tell a whole story, a whole short story. Mm-hmm. And instead, I wrote, I just like characters and scenes, and oh, it just spirals into madness. And until I got to the end of it, after like seven years, I couldn't even look at it as a complete entity. And like, how can you start to learn pacing? How can you start to learn anything if you just have like half a half a dog? That's how I think of it. Like, ha- like half a sandwich is okay. Half a dog is not. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can enjoy half a sandwich. You cannot enjoy half a dog. Um, and uh, and in a, a half finished novel, it's hard. You, you give it to somebody, and you're like, "What do you think?" And they're like, I, I don't know. Enti-. It's like I was interested and then it stopped. Yeah. Like, what can you say other than that? Um, but but also, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, I worked out a lot of the spelling punctuation. Like, how do you do, how do you attribute non-confusing dialogue? Yeah. Um, I did that with my failed high school novel. Mm. Um, I, I knocked those corners off there. Um, you know, and, uh, and then abandon the project because it was a mess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say if my lowest hanging fruit and my, my biggest piece of advice, uh, that I give that, you know, I feel better giving now, uh, because of, uh, what you, what you said, uh, it, it now it is Nandi, not it, or no, Nandi? Nandi. Nandi. Um, had it right. <laughs> okay. Right ish. Um, the, um, I advise people to, to do what you said, which is make sure it gets into the hands of your audience. I tend to say it a different way. I say, don't give your stuff to other writers Mm. to read. And now it can be good, you know, like sometimes having that writer circle or that group of aspiring writers to you support each other, you talk about the craft in a way that you can only talk about with other writers. But, you know, I I didn't have any writer friends and certainly nobody who was like really trying hard to get published. But all my friends were geeks and all my Mm -hmm. friends read fantasy. And, you know, and even the people who weren't like hardcore fantasy readers were readers. And so what I learned is... um, you know, through a couple bad experiences, sometimes I would find a writer and I'd be like, what do you think? And then they would, like you said, they would tear into it. But I think because some aspiring writers, and, and I'm, I paint with a broad brush here, some aspiring writers have been trying to get published for a long time, maybe not having much luck, maybe feeling some frustration, maybe feeling a lot of self-doubt about their ability as a writer, maybe just got a couple of rejections, maybe 50 rejections, no yet published story. And then you give them your, your story, your book, your whatever. And then maybe so that they can feel good about themselves. uh, You want to be very critical to prove that you know what to do as a writer. Yeah. And you 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 prove yourself by saying I am I'm obviously better because I know all the things you did wrong. I agree. Yep, I've run into that. I think. And I'll say, um, especially yeah. online, like go to a random forum where people are giving advice. Please don't. Please don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think that in especially my. What, what was Sorry, that? Go ahead. I said especially on Facebook. Facebook, oh, no. yes, oh. yes, yep. I think for me, I've um, I like a mix. I like um, beta readers um, that are just readers, and I like to have writers. Um, so a unique thing about me is actually my debut novel was originally posted on Wattpad, and that was how it kind of blew up and and got published. And it was a very interesting experience having people like hundreds people comment on every chapter as I put it up 
Um, and these were just readers, obviously. They're just people, it's a free site, they're coming, they're looking to be entertained. Um, but it was a really interesting experience because I got to um, see how people reacted to characters in real time. And one thing that was really useful was if they could, if people could see like a twist coming. <laughs> so I could say, oh, okay, I, I guess I'm editing next week's chapter because clearly everybody could see that coming. Or if they could tell if a character was going to be um, bad or, or things like this. So I don't know if I would do that for any of my, my next books because there's downsides, which is that... Um, well, one, there's anxiety of, of constantly getting the story up once a week. It's like, I think it was Shonda Rhimes who described this for TV writing. She was like, it's like putting down track in front of a train and you just, you got to get the track in front of the train. And it was like that. Like when I wouldn't update, I'd get, you know, people commenting, where's the update? What's going on? I'm like, this, you will chill. Like it's free. <laughs> what right. you? Just yeah. give me some time. But um, it, it, it was also very gratifying because the, the, feedback was overwhelmingly positive because it's a website where anybody can go and choose what they want to read so by default it was usually filtering and finding the readers who would actually enjoy this book um, so I don't know how how useful that would be in terms of critique because <laughs> you're kind of preaching to the choir um, however it was good in terms of um, getting real-time like marketable feedback about uh, about the plot and the characters um, so that I think that's what readers are good for other writers I like because um, they're a little bit better at explaining why they don't like something yeah um, a little bit okay nobody I think nobody can really and this is one thing when you're critiquing as well to be mindful of is not writing someone's book for them <laughs> yeah. you know you have a point yep um, but writers are a little bit better of, at knowing why they don't like something. They may be like, oh, well, maybe I don't like the pacing here. Um, or maybe this character is acting out of character. Like they can actually articulate it in a way that um, readers who don't write often cannot. But I think um, your job as a writer ultimately is to figure out how to fix what's wrong on your own anyway. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I would like to dive in because um, um, you were talking about um, not writing, yeah, the person's work for them, you know, and I think that's very important, you know, it ties in with when you were talking about um, you have to put your book in front of the right readers, you know, and, and sometimes they have to be readers and just readers. Sometimes they have to be writers and just writers. You know, because you have to know exactly what what you want the work to do, you know, because um, readers and writers process stories differently. You know, a writer is going to pick the story apart. He's going to mm -hmm. look at the pieces. How does it work? How does it fit here? It's more of a workman, a technical kind of, you know, analysis. But a reader has a broader look at the story. You know, the details don't have to match, but does the whole piece work? You mm -hmm. know, how do I feel about this story? Does it make me happy? Even if the plot is shoddy, even if the characters yeah. are wonky, you know? And I, I, I kind of feel like I may be biased because I've been reading all my life, you know, before I, I started professionally writing. I feel like readers have a more astute, they get the, po I think that's the end goal, the destination, you know? And, um, writers may sort of get caught up in the process sometimes and forget the end result but but then again different stories have different purposes so you have to know exactly what you want for example you want your stories to sell a million copies then yes. you need to put them in front of the million people which are the average readers you know but you want your stories to win an award do you also, want yes. them to be seen as impeccable exceptional then you have to put them in front of the writers because those are the people who are going to judge, you know, the quality, you know, how the pieces fit together. So I think it's it's really important what you both said about putting it in front of the right readers. You know, in, in this case, readers can be writers or readers, but basically you have to know who you're giving your story to and why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, the the variety 
um, of, you know, being aware. I, I, I constantly think about and talk about audience, like who, who is really reading this. And I think I, uh, I got to the point where uh, I don't think about, I mean, some things do have a specific audience or maybe three audiences, even like if I write a blog, who am I writing a blog to? It's like mostly the people who are going to show up and read my blog. That's easy. But also it's like, oh, what if, you know, some people like this blog and they share it with their friends? Those, that's a different audience, you know? Mm -hmm. that's Those people have no context for who I am or the last three blogs I've written. Um, and and that's a very simple short piece of writing. Even an email has an audience where the it's the person you're sending it to, but then also potentially anyone that person then shows it to. That's a secondary audience. And as soon as you're considering publication, the different types of audience, it just if you think about it too much, it will be paralyzing because it is other authors. It's old school authors. It's new authors. Um, um, you know, it's readers who have like never read anything like yours before. It's readers who have read 2000 fantasy novels um, with like when I wrote the second book in the series, what like threw a wrench into my gears was like trying to think how, what if somebody picks this book up first? Oh no. Like, mm -hmm. There's some people who are going to have read my first book immediately before picking up the second one, maybe read it three times and then read my second one. And there's some people who might have read that first book three years ago and now be coming back. Like, so how do I catch up this audience and whatever? So I think about audience a lot. And the nice thing about getting multiple opinions and multiple beta reader responses is if you only have one person tell you what they think, you have no context. Um, you only have one opinion and either you believe it or you don't. Um, my, my rule of thumb is when I give out beta copies of the book, typically I do them in batches of like three or four. It's like, okay, here's my new version. And then I yeah. send it out to some people. And then if it comes back, uh, and somebody says, it's like, uh, I'm really, I'm confused here. Well, I, that that's a separate issue I'll talk about. But if somebody's like, oh, I don't like this character. And I'm like, huh. Okay. Um, and then, you know, or if, if one person says something I don't agree with, then I'm like, I'm still the writer. I, I get to be the boss. If they say something and you're like, oh, thank goodness. Yeah, of course I got to fix that. Great. They've done you a favor. Mm -hmm. If they say something and you're like, nah, then I, I go with me because I'm the boss. It's my book. Two people say the same thing and I still don't agree. Then I'm like, mm. then three. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, no, I'm wrong. I, it doesn't matter how I feel or what I want. I got to, I got to attend to this. But this is the other thing that I want to talk about in terms of like getting good feedback in the nitty gritty uh, that what I've developed over the years is I used to just give the printout. I always do a physical book, by the way, like I print it out, I bind it up and now I give it to somebody with like a red pen, hmm. like clipped to the spiral uh, for one, because if they do want to write in it, it's way easier to see. And also I'm like, I'm like, go nuts, like work out your bad feelings you had about your grade school English teacher who marked up your papers. And, and what I say is any, the more you write on this, the happier I'll be. Mm. And the, some of the ones that I love the most are just people who do a constant, like also I make the margins a little bigger to give them space to write. Um, I make sure there's some white space. I leave lines in between paragraphs so it's not like a huge wall of text. Um, I try to be sensitive to people who, like me now, are older and they need glasses to read and never used to. So I make sure the font is good. Again, these are little considerations, but anything, these people are doing you a favor. And so and I want to make it easy to give them, give me feedback. 
But some of what I love the most is people who just talk about how they feel. And it's like watching a movie with a friend and you're kind of watching them and something happens and they go, oh, oh, they're going to get it. Or like, oh, no, not behind that door. And if you write that in the margin, I know how you feel in that moment. And then I'm like, this is everything that I need as a reader. I need to know what you're thinking. And sometimes people are they're They're like, why, why don't they, why don't they call the cops? And then like half a page later in the margins, they're like, oh, because I answered and I'm like, I nailed that because I want them to be curious because that means they're engaged. And then they're like, oh, good. My thought was smart. And I anticipated this before the character did. And then, and it didn't go un, unfulfilled. And so that running commentary, the people who do that are the best. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and here's the big thing that I tell everyone. I say, anything you write in here is right. Anything you feel is right. And so never feel bad about putting it in there. If you're bored, tell me you're bored. If you laughed out loud, tell me you laughed. And I will value all of it. Um, and that's the joy of just getting raw emotional feedback is it's, you know, it's, it, it lets me know where people are mentally while, while reading through it, uh, which is invaluable for me. Authors don't tend to be as good at that sort of feedback mm. because they are, they're, they're bricklayers. They're thinking of the craft. Um, uh, and I think we could talk about that a little bit more later. Um, uh, are you guys okay if I go to uh, the chat for a couple of questions? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, everybody, uh, if, if you've put questions in the chat before this, I didn't see them because I've been focused over here. So feel free if you have any questions, bounce them in here and I will bring them to the conversation. Mm. Um, somebody here says, I will literally uh, hand write emojis in the margins, <laughs> uh, which I, I learning how to read the, imp the implications of your beta readers is a skill by itself. Yep. Um, like uh, I had one person in the margins, they would just write, no, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, oh, sh okay. I guess I better figure this out. Yep. Um, yep. um, that, uh, <laughs> you know what, that actually, um, kind of segues into something I, I think is important to talk about, Yeah. which is how to respond to negative critique mm, yeah let's do that um uh so i recently had a critique that was less than glowing uh, shall we say in certain parts um and even as a published writer as someone who's been doing this for a long time that hurt <laughs> that, that was a little bit of a blow i was a little bit like oh my god i knew it i suck i don't you know um and i don't think i don't know if we ever get over that um, people will say, you know, don't don't take critique personally, and that's great advice. And it's impossible to follow. <laughs> you will not be able to follow it um, because this is the book is. I know people say book is not baby, but again, it is. It really <laughs> is. It's your psychology in there. It's your thought process. It's your beliefs. It's your subconscious. Um, it's your ego. And when somebody attacks that, it's really hard not to not to feel like some type of way, you know, shame, guilt. Um, so I would say my biggest um, advice is take a day. I take a day before you respond. I have done this and been so glad. Like there have been times where I've read people's feedback and be like, what are you, what are you talking about? You don't get this at all. Were you an idiot? What, you know, but you just... Take a day before you respond. I've I've found a lot of the time that when I've had slept on it, I've been like, okay, I kind of see where they're coming from. Um, so negative feedback, definitely <laughs> give yourself some distance because you're only human. Your ego is going to have a knee-jerk reaction. Um, give yourself some distance before you, you engage that person again, should you choose to. 
Uh, Anyone else have some thoughts on on this? I mean, I, I, I couldn't agree more, like taking some time. And again, not beating yourself up for having an emotional reaction. If you mm. made someone dinner and they critiqued it, mm. and the critique, and it's like, as a whole, I enjoyed this dinner. However, here are the four parts I feel you could have done better. <laughs> the peas could have were a bit hard. Yeah, it's like, man, there's too much the salt chicken here. Was dry. His chicken was dry. And I'd be like, get out of my house. Like, why? You know, and so like, and everyone would be like, oh, of course. But, but yet you expect somebody to receive a critique of a story and mm. not have a feeling. It's like, it's it's something to strive for, but. You know, how, how achievable is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think any other, before we go on to the questions, any other advice for taking the feedback, you know, uh, or mm -hmm. things that have been useful or even things that we've done that have been bad, you know, that, mm -hmm. that people can avoid. Those are great. Those are great tricks too. Mm-hmm. I would just say resist um, the urge to be defensive. Um, this is a book. It's not like your thesis. You're <laughs> not trying to change someone's mind. How they feel is how they feel. And and this is something I very recently had to, um, to get to learn. Um, there's a very real, especially when it's something where you're like, they just, what kind of reading comprehension this is clearly, but it's not, you can't, change somebody's mind about how they feel about your book just take it in if you don't agree you don't agree well and um, and, and this is something that it again over the years like i worked on name of the wind for 14 years before it was published and so it went through many iterations i had many different people sharing their feelings and mm -hmm. what i eventually came around to is if somebody said i'm bored here there, it doesn't it doesn't matter how you feel as the writer mm -hmm. they're right they were bored mm -hmm. and it, it's like you might not like that they're bored that's not their fault if you want to do something about that fix your book <laughs> right mm -hmm. and you know it maybe maybe a little boredom unless boredom was your goal and you're like yeah nailed it <laughs> um you've you've got to acknowledge that it doesn't matter what your intention was and it's like could they have been tired could they have mm -hmm. been reading it before bed? Is their dog sick? Are they having trouble at work? Did they just have a bad breakup? Yeah, sure. Guess what? So will every reader. Every reader out there will have something going on in their life. And so don't say, oh, they are they just didn't get it. They're just not smart. Guess what? Sometimes not. you want not smart people to read your book or your story. You want I mean, the not smart demographic is huge, folks. Uh, like, uh, sell those books to everyone. I, yep. um, I don't want only one smartest person in the world to dig on my stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to get that person and everyone else. Exactly. Yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense. Um, which is why, yeah, I was saying earlier that you have to know. You have to put the book in front of the million people if you know that's what you want because yeah like you said the not smart demographic is pretty large so yeah you have to consider i i much rather consider the readers before the writers you know yeah even though their opinions might be less technical or less detailed and um, another thing another problem that i think um one has to contend with while getting criticism or giving critique as a writer is that sometimes um it's not about right or wrong you know it's about destination the story is a destination mm. and you know every destination is valid the the problem is the writers the writer tends to have his own destination in mind because he's a traveler just like you so he might be showing you what he would have done differently. You know, as a writer, you might be giving, you know, the person you're giving critique to, you might be giving them your destination, not necessarily a better one. Yeah. So I feel like you have to watch, you know, each time you're giving, you know, you're critiquing a work as a writer, you're not just telling them how you would have done it. 
you know, you know, sometimes the things we, we criticize might not necessarily be bad. It might just be different. So yeah, that's something to to watch for when giving critique as a writer or getting it from writers. But yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And, and and yeah, additionally, like I said, there's no right or wrong. So their way might not necessarily be wrong, just different. So if you don't like it, it's always good to, you know, accept it in the spirit of sportmanship that, okay, fine. They had a valid, you, you know, they had a valid point, but it's not, it's just not my destination. Mm. One of the uh, way back when I was first, I was going to get published and they said, okay, cool. Now go get us blurbs. And I'm like, what do you mean? Go get you blurbs from, and they're like, you know, it's like we'll we'll try to get blurbs for you too, but like who's the authors that you love that you would like to have say something nice about your book? And I'm like, can I just do that? And they're like <laughs> they're like they're like, honestly, they're less likely to ignore you than they are us because mm-hmm. publishers ask for blurbs all the time, but you're a you're you're the up and comer, like you're the the dewy eyed newbie that they once were. They get that. And I reached out to a bunch of people and I got very lucky. Um, like I will never, ever get over the fact uh, that Ursula K. Le Guin um, said that she liked my book, man. Wow. S- said, said she liked my language and my world building. And I'm like, ha, huh? like I'm still, <laughs> I'm still going like this in my heart 10 years later. Um, and then, and, and, and she's like, there's coffee in here, but it seems like kind of a Renaissance setting. And I'm like, Oh, you get it. You get what I'm doing. Like, I love that you're into that. And, but I, I also hit up Patricia McKillop who has written like stunning stuff like that. I've loved my whole life. Riddle master of head was like such a big deal. And she has such an elegant storytelling and prose. I, I remember some lines out of her books that I've only read once like the start of one of her books was um, they say he rode into town on a horse, the color of milk, but I saw him come out of the wood mm. and I'm like, I'll never start a book that good. Right. I'll never write a sentence that good. And I, I, I hit her up and I said, would you do this? Could, could you read my book? I'm, I'm nobody. Do you want to try it? Mm. And she got back to me because typically what happens is she, people are like, sure, I'll try it. You send it out. And a lot of them you don't hear back from because people are busy. Yeah. That's the way of the world. And also sometimes they try it. They don't like it. But nobody wants to say, sorry, kid, I tried it and I don't like it. That's a hard one. But she pinged me back and she said, she said, you know, I read about 100 pages and you obviously know how to write. I think this is a good book and it's going to find an audience. But whatever I am looking for as a middle-aged, mature woman and a mother, at this point in my life, I don't think this is my book. Hmm. And I, that was such, I mean, that didn't hurt my feelings. It was such a kindness. It was such honesty that I'm like, I was more flattered by that than anyone kind of being like, Sure, sure, kid. Best thing since token. Put print it. Whatever. She was so uh, that's hard what she did, and I promised myself at that point in my life, even though I never thought anyone would actually want me to blurb their book, that I would try to always be as honest as she had been, and only blurb something that really I loved, that I really loved. Um, and uh, but but again, she and what she said is just what you said. It's like whatever, like this one isn't for me. You know, thank Mm. you. This isn't for me. Um, So now I'm going to hit one or two questions here um, that I've, I've left. Um, um, uh, Anyone feel free. I'm, I'm giving explicit permission. Repeat your questions. If they happen 10 minutes ago, uh, normally ask people not to spam the chat like that. Oh, here we go. Do you get your beta readers to sign a non-disclosure of some sort? Do you worry about your story leaking? Back in the day, no. Nowadays, Mm. (laughs) yeah. Yeah, I'm not important enough for that yet. (laughs) I don't care. 
and I trust everyone that I send it to. It's all um, friends, really, for me at this point. The only thing was uh, when I was putting it on Wattpad, but that was, um, honestly, I didn't really expect that to to go anywhere. It was just kind of to, to build an audience and to get my name out there, really. Um, how about, how about you? Uh, uh, do we, do you worry about non-disclosure or, or, or things leaking? No, no, not at all. No. And, and <laughs> I, I want to underline this folks. Cause I once had a friend and they said, and they came to me, they're like, Hey Pat, you know, I've been, you've been published. I've got a book and I'm looking to send it out. And I'm like, do you polish it? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, I want to send it out, but how do I know? that the people I'm showing it to like agents and editors aren't going to steal it. And I'm like, I'm like, they won't. <laughs> um, and he goes, but it's so good. They're going to want to steal it. And I said, and I stopped and I'm like, if they loved a book enough to want to steal it, they would want to publish it instead because that's their job. Mm-hmm. And he went, he goes, yeah, I see what you're saying, but it's so good. I'm sure they're going to want to steal it. <laughs> and then I said, do you realize if word ever got out in the community that an agent stole a book or an editor stole a book, it would destroy them forever. Mm -hmm. They would never work again. And he went, yeah, but, and I, and at that point in my head, it flipped. And I was said, and I'm like, you will never be published. Yeah, and and it, because it, it it's it's an understandable fear, and it comes from love of your work, which is important. But he couldn't get his head into the place where it's like, oh no, you you do have to actually show your book to professionals. Um, you know, yeah, I just wanted to say that that level of confidence is kind of useful, though. <laughs> I, mean, I I admire the audacity. <laughs> If I could like you, combine you, that audacity with some with writing skill, I'd be unstoppable. Yeah. Unstoppable. You know, One of I actually I actually hear that thing a lot too. You know the oh, how do I make sure my work won't get stolen? But the, the, the thing is, you know you can't you can't sell your goods without showing them off. You know, so I guess you just have to make a choice. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and I will say, I mean, yes, it happens like once in a blue moon, like such a statistical anomaly. Um, but in terms of what you said, you're right. That confidence, that unflappableness, that's almost like heart armor, right? <laughs> um, and I, I had a friend uh, and she used to say, I'm trying to live my life with the confidence of a mediocre white man. And if only I can do that. I think I can get so much done. And I'm like, man, I hear that. I used to be, I used to have that confidence in my twenties. It was great. I don't know where it went, but I don't got it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, I'm a scientist and I write primarily research articles, but I found that narrative is still really important. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, uh, my best work makes my fellow scientists feel like they have made my scientific discovery. This is interesting. Mm. Could you share your strategies for pulling readers into the action of the writing and making them feel... So this is adjacent to read and critique, but this is a fair mm. question. Uh, I think the question here ultimately is, um, how do you get engagement, like emotional engagement, making mm. them feel like they have agency in writing? Any, mm -hmm. any advice there? Uh, uh, Ganyatupa, did you want to start? Uh, I'm still putting my thoughts together. Yeah, the, the question seems a bit um, tricky. Can you um, rephrase, can you? Yeah, how do you pull readers into the action okay. of, or, or the material of the story, I think is what they really mean, and help them feel like they have, they say agency, but I think, how do you get emotional engagement? Hmm. Which is the big okay. one. That's the brass ring. Okay. Well, I, I, I think um, you can start by drawing them in with familiar things. 
you know, stuff they've seen before, stuff that they would respond to easily. You know, it might, it might be a trope. It might be, it might be a familiar symbol, you know. Uh, it might be the guy with the cloak, you know. There's all these recurring things, these recurring, you know, in SFF. You know, they tend to give, um, it's, it's not like the writers can't be original, you know, but they have their uses, you know. They draw the reader in into familiar territory, you know. So, yeah, that can help you pull the reader in, carry them along, you know, and make them feel like a part of it before you bring in all the distinct elements of your world. Hmm. You know, yeah. Sort of like lulling them in, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when people say, it's like, oh, how do I, how do I make a unique work of fantasy? And I'm like, I wrote a story about an orphan boy who goes to a school of magic. Why are you asking me? You know, <laughs> like, uh, I like to think that I did my own thing there, but there is a well-worn groove that helped carry my people into the story. Yeah, that's a. I'm so I'm trying to think of this in in a way that's universal because the question was from someone who said they write science articles, which is nonfiction. Um, but I think uh, in terms of crafting a narrative, there are certain things you can do that sort of psychological tricks <laughs> that get people engaged. Hmm. And I guess one of those things would be appealing to, as you said, emotion. Um, it reminds me of the, the advice to craft the perfect twist. Mm. which is that you want somebody to have figured it out like right before the twist actually happens. Um, and that's, I think that's the kind of manipulation for lack of a better word that we're looking for here is uh, where you're trying to get someone to feel like they made the discovery um, is you're, you're kind of planting the seeds along the way. Yeah. I, I also once heard it was a great, people are like you know what really makes the Sherlock Holmes stories great because they those pull you in and somebody summed it up once and ever since then I've never been able to think of any of those stories the same way and they're like you love Sherlock Holmes stories because you're always impressed by Sherlock and he's so much smarter than you and we like seeing cool people but you're always smarter than Watson so you don't feel dumb and i'm like that, that's it like you know because you know watson is like oh holmes you figured i'm like wow holmes that was pretty impressive and then watson is like but what about this and i'm like come on so you're looking up <laughs> and you're looking down and you're like you're like i'm i'm better than watson mm -hmm. uh and and so you get to feel good about yourself without uh you know kind of being in the middle uh and that's a little bit like what what you said about establish the familiar and then then you can vary it like mm. you know bring them in it's like here's something comforting and known and then i'm going to make it different and strange so you don't get bored um i that's that's what what i like to to think about too okay mm. um i'm i'm sorry i'm so long-winded um how do you give constructive detailed feedback to a friend who ooh who tends to hear compliments as platitudes. So mm. this is a great one. How do you give feedback to somebody who cannot hear a compliment? That's um, not something I can say I've ever run into. Well. But if I did, um, I guess I would give the, the feedback. Uh, I'm making the very big assumption that the reason they are receiving it as a platitude is because the the compliment is very maybe short and they're um conceptualizing mm. this as trite so i i would maybe give my feedback in a lot more detail i like this because i like the way you did this um i like this character because i really um you know identify with um their backstory, things like this. Yeah, well, yeah. 
yeah, I, I agree with um, Nandi. I mean, we all have that one friend who doesn't ever want to hear, you know. Yeah, but you, you beat it into them. <laughs> yeah, so repetition. Repetition. Okay. Repetition. Uh, and and I, I will say, like, again, with when I give out the pen, somebody being, you know, if they hand the book back and they say, I like it, I'm like, what? But if like in there, they like circle something and they're like, and they're like, yay, or like, oh no, you know, it's like, I can, I can point at the thing, mm-hmm. you know? So like, yeah, be specific. Um, or it's like, instead of like, oh, your dialogue is good, you know, saying like, this sentence is a great sentence, you know, like this made me happy. This, this, yeah. you know, um, um, oh, we are so close to the end. Um, oh, and I kind of forgot to talk about charity because I was so into the, the <laughs> discussion. Uh, one thing I'm going to share, this is the one I've kept in my back pocket because uh, back when I, I got to hang out more with Mary Robinette uh, Kowal, um, you know, she, she's got such craft. Like I kind of, I figure things out. What I end up with is good, but Mary kind of knows what she's doing. Um. And I think that's the difference between like, like uh, two types of art, uh, you know, artists or creators, is she, she knows why things work and don't, and I am not always sure. Mm. But we were talking about things, and she said, for feedback, uh, because I I bounced a beta version of the book off her, and then I was getting feedback, and she said, it's like when I go to the doctor. She goes, I will trust anyone to identify a symptom. You are hot. You put your hand on their head. You, mm-hmm. This is hot. You're running a fever. You just coughed. You know? You know? Uh, and that's effectively saying, I'm bored. You know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I will trust fewer people to diagnose what's going on. Because that's when somebody writes in the margin and they go, this is too long. Um, because what they're doing is giving advice because they're bored. Hmm. And so he goes, that's somebody somebody diagnosing. Um, and and that's a, a doctor does that, you know? And she goes, I trust virtually no one to prescribe. Um, and that is effectively saying, cut this scene if somebody mm-hmm. writes it in the margin yeah. and working in uh, doing a couple of writers rooms or looking at screenplays a lot of people say you look for the note behind the note because like the execs come back and they're like the third act is too long but what they're really saying is that it's not they're not excited about it the problem is probably in the first act you haven't set it up properly mm. or if this person is bored in this scene it's not that the scene is bad or too long. Maybe I put two exposition scenes together. You know, I need to just move them apart. I got to put an action scene here. And then when they're catching their breath, you know, maybe it's a pacing issue. And so again, saying I'm bored, it's always true. This is too long. Maybe not always true. Cut the chapter. You're not my doctor. You're not my you're not my real dad. You know, don't tell me what to do. That's my editor. Only my yeah. editor gets to say that. Um so um uh, I will briefly say I, I wanted to share that because Mary's take on that was so so much better than anything in a nutshell I can provide. I just wanted to share it with the world. Um uh folks, I could talk with you guys for another hour about this and so much more. But I, 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 I feel bad. Uh, you've been so generous with your time. Uh, I don't want to to keep you longer than you've promised. Uh, thank you so much for being willing to yeah, come in fun. here and yeah, uh, and and do this. And uh, and again for helping out with World Builders. Uh, you're so kind, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>